hello all and welcome to my youtube channel so today in this particular video i am going to be discussing about how we can train a custom question answering model for our question answering system so today in this particular video we're going to be discussing a uh, training a, a custom model and we're going to be seeing how it can be done but before we uh, go for the training uh, uh, tutorial uh, i just want to make sure that you should you should have followed the particular video which i posted recently which was on uh, how to create a data set uh, for question answering task so if you haven't watched this particular video uh, like how to prepare and, and annotate a, a data set for the question answering task please do watch that particular video and then after that you can jump on to this particular video uh, so that you can get a pro uh, proper hands on right so in this particular video we're just going to uh, take up the training data which has already been prepared and we're going to just train a, a question answering model over here so for creating a training data how, how to annotate it how to uh, make sure that the data is in the right format for question answering i have discussed all these informations regarding the preparation of the data in my previous video so please do go to go and watch it and let me know uh, how that how that is helpful for you so continuing on to this video, uh, I have downloaded a data set uh, that is standard data set for question answering task uh, for this tutorial. But uh, if you don't have standard data set, you have only data. If you have own, if you have own data set, then you can just prefer my uh, this video and you can just annotate your own data set and then you can follow the same procedure what I am going to show here, right? So for this tutorial, I have taken a standard standard data set uh, from the Stanford uh, data set. So uh, this is a data set I will be I have downloaded here and I will be using over here to train a question answering model. So uh, once I have downloaded this data set, I have uh, imported into the my uh, Colab uh, repository. And then once that is done, uh, I'm just going to be using a, uh, a framework which I have already discussed in my last video, uh, which is an Haystack uh, framework. So uh, Haystack framework generally provides a one shot solution for uh, question answering task. So if you go into the Google and check uh, Haystack, so we can get into their GitHub and we can understand uh, what what is this Haystack and what, what are the things they provide. So in my last uh, video, I have provided a Haystack annotation tool where we discuss the Haystack's uh, annotation tool and how to annotate it. It's the same framework we're going to use for training also for training question answering model. So have they so they have a huge uh, uh, set of uh, framework for the question answering task. So we are going to use the same thing, and we are we are going to use the same framework for our training also. So you can go to this particular GitHub and you will get to know what I am talking about. But this is a very good uh, uh, framework for training your question answering model. Uh, so you can just you can just go through this their GitHub and tutorials. You can understand everything in very uh, crystal clear. So I'm just going to demonstrate uh, what are, what have did what have, how to train a question answering model using this particular framework. So once I have downloaded the data and and have stored it into the my collab repository, what I'm going to do is uh, I will just uh, uh, import or install this particular framework uh, that is Haystack framework uh, to do my training. Right. So first of all, I will run this uh, NVIDIA SMI command so that I could know uh, which uh, GPU has been assigned. And so once that is done, I'm going to just install a Haystack. So these are the uh, PIM solution you have to do uh, for the Haystack framework to be installed. So it, it, it might take few uh, minutes to get installed. And till then we can wait uh, so that once the installation is done, we can pro uh, progress for the uh, work. Okay, so the installation of the framework has been done uh, on the Colab. Now what we can do is we can just start using the framework, right? So uh, the first thing uh, what needs to be important from Haystack is this farm reader. So this farm reader uh, is a, a class that has been created by this Haystack, uh, which is used to uh, take up the model, store it, prepare the like whatever the custom uh, customization has to be done with respect to the model is to be done in this particular class. So let's suppose I am just going to import this uh, farm reader and in this farm reader the parameters are like uh, give the uh, model path and whether it's going to be going, going to use a GPU or not 
and then some uh, documentation of uh, uh, like uh, what are the arguments uh, or parameters that that model may be using for training that can also be passed here so uh, with respect to that uh, uh, let me show you some uh, arguments or parameters that can be passed here so before that let me just uh, run this uh, uh, or import this parameter explicitly in the new cell and then we can get to know what are the parameters it just takes so it might take few seconds to get it uh, imported. It's a huge uh, uh, class. So it might take few seconds to get downloaded. And once that is done, uh, we can just take a look at uh, what this, what does this farm reader uh, accepts as an argument. So we are going to check it. We are going to check uh, what are the things it, it generally takes. So you can see uh, it takes model path, uh, it takes contextual window size, which is uh, by default 150 batch size, uh, which is generally 50, and then uh, use GPU. And there are also many things like uh, you can provide do uh, document stride, max sequence length, which are uh, the model parameters that that can be given here. And then once you pass this uh, particular uh, uh, parameters and with the model name uh, and then you can start on the model and then you can train the model right so we are going to the we, we are going to do the same thing so we are going to import this farm reader and we are going to pass the model name so you must be uh, questioning how does this model name is going to take place so uh, to know which model to be downloaded we have to we have to go into the hugging face and in hugging face site we have this uh, model section we are going to go over there and we're going to uh, get into the question answering task because we are just now solving question answering task so we're going to go over there and with respect to this question answering task all kind of models are present so in this tutorial we have taken this model so i have just taken the, taken up this model and i've taken the i've copied it and i've pasted it over here similarly you can uh, what you can do is you can also take up any other uh, models which are present here in hugging face uh, you can also use this robota based spot too and you can just uh, copy paste his name and over here and it will start downloading the model from the hugging face so let's just uh, do it uh, how it how it can be done so before that uh, let's just uh, uh, use this particular uh, uh, reader and let's run this particular code so that the model get downloaded uh, in the particular uh, uh, collab environment so you can see the model is started to download and it's a very uh, small model uh, compared to the other models of uh, bird because it's a distilled version of the bird so that's why we are using it over here uh, and it will help us in fast training with maintaining the better uh, accuracy comparable to the uh, other bird uh, huge models so let it get downloaded and once it's get downloaded we can start our training so as you can see the model has been downloaded now what we have to do is we have to just uh, initiate our reader that is, uh, if you go at the above, you can see we have stored everything in the reader, the model parameters and everything. And just we have to put up a reader.train. So we have to use a reader.train method to pass the data and the model, right? And so there are a few parameters that is going to be taking here. So reader.train method has been initiated and the data directory like which where the data has been uh, mentioned so in my case the data directory is the data folder here in this particular lab and inside this all the JSON files are here and then uh, you have to pass the train file name and you have to give the train file name JSON and then you have to pass the uh, GPU whether it's going to use GPU then you can pass uh, the number of epoch it has to train for this particular tool I'm just using one epoch to train and then you can also use uh, you can also pass uh, uh, the model directory where it's going to be saving the train the model right so it's going to create a my model uh, directory and here it's going to save the all the uh, model parameters file once the model get trained right so uh, let us see what are the other parameters it accepts uh, so if i just go and take in take a look into it so you can see this particular train method has uh, uh, many other uh, parameters like dev underscore file name test underscore file name batch size epochs uh, learning rate, uh, uh, dev split, and um, uh, evaluation, uh, evaluate every step, 
so uh, these are the things uh, there are many things uh, that can be uh, also be provided here as a parameter while training so we can use uh, all those settings here and train our, our model on the data set right so here uh, if you see i have two data set uh, that is train and dev but i am not going to use this train data set because it's very huge and it gone it's going to take like two hours to get it trained so and uh, so for this reason uh, and for this tutorial i'm just going to use development set and i will train it on this development set because it's very small and i can just train it in like 10 minutes so for that reason i've mentioned this train file name as dev 2.0 to just uh, train it but uh, if you want to train it on your own data set which is very huge you can just go and uh, take up your train data set over here and pass it here and then you can also provide uh, dev underscore file name uh, so that you can train uh, and evaluate on the uh, development file so for this, uh, so for this tutorial i have just taken uh, as a train file name as a dev file because it's very small so that i can train it otherwise if i would have taken this train version 2.0 it would have taken like two hours to get it trained right so i'm not talking i'm not taking that and that video get will get it very long so for that reason i'm passing this so with respect to that let's just initiate this particular cell and let's see what are the uh, output we can expect right so let's initiate this cell Okay, so the training has been done on the dev data set now uh, and the model has been saved here uh, in the uh, directory you can see uh, that is my model and all the parameters you can see are present here. So the model is here and all the parameters tokenizer, tokenizer and uh, vocabulary text. So every configuration files regarding to the model that has been trained and it has been saved over here right so now what we have to do is we have to just take up this particular model and we have to uh, test it on uh, our data set uh, which is uh, our data set uh, that, that we are going to test it on the uh, dev 2.0 only uh, because uh, we don't have uh, we cannot uh, use this train 2.0 because it's very huge and it will take a lot of time to evaluate also so for this uh, uh, i am just going to use this particular data set only to evaluate so uh, you can explicitly you can also save this uh, model whatever whatever the model we have trained by using this related or save and you can mention the directory name but that has already been done so i'm not going to use this but this is also an option uh, you can save the model explicitly and uh, uh, once that is done uh, uh, what what i'm going to do is going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to just uh, take up this particular model uh, whatever whatever the model has been trained and uh, i'll just pass this you uh, load up this form reader and pass the path of the mod train model that is the model which i have saved it over here and then i'm going to read it over here in this new reader so let us run this so it will just take up the model whatever the model it has been uh, trained here and it will just save it in the new dot underscore reader and then uh, we can just uh, uh, directly evaluate and the uh, the file this particular model we can evaluate using the data and you can uh, pass it uh, to the uh, you can pass the data set uh, that is uh, the test data set or train data set uh, but here we have uh, been using a dev data set for training so and we cannot use train data set because it's very huge so i'm just going to use this dev data set to just evaluate it on but in your case you can just use a, a test data set which you have prepared it for the testing uh, which is just an uh, differentiator uh, against uh, the train and dev right so you can use it uh, that way and once that is done uh, we can just uh, run this particular cell to evaluate and then we can view the results right so just run this and you can see the evaluation of this particular data set has been started now it is processing the data set and you can see the results in few seconds it will evaluate on the few uh, long sets data sets and it's gonna give us the uh, results right so let's wait and uh, and see what are the uh, accuracy we have achieved on this data set
okay so the evaluation has been done so now we can uh, print up our results over here by using uh, uh, we, the results are being saved here in this particular uh, variable so we just going to print that variable now let's see what are the results it has been printed so you can see we have trained it for just one epoch and you can see the exact match is 66.63 and f1 score is 68 percent and top and accuracy we have achieved is like 96 percent 97 percent right so uh, here uh, in this question answer in task we generally uh, take up uh, metrics like exact match f1 score and top and accuracy so if, um, exact match uh, is just uh, giving an exactly how much uh, uh, it is matching with the uh, given answer the printed answer and the correct answer how much it is matching so that percentage is, is being given and fn score is giving how much uh, uh, accurate uh, that has been the, the model has been uh, with respect to all the kind of bias and other things and top and accuracy is saying how much uh, the model has been achieved uh, uh, the best accuracy it has achieved while uh, training the model right so uh, that's the uh, uh, matrix but you can also take up look, look take up a look on to this uh, matrix uh, uh, and you can search upon this particular matter you get a better understanding on it so once this uh, evaluation results are uh, are at, at we can see but you can see is just for one epoch uh, you can also understand like if training for such huge uh, question answering model a uh, huge question answering model takes a lot of time we just train it for one uh, epoch so if you train for 10 epochs it would take more time so that's a demerit but yeah uh, in, I think within a five to six epochs, you're gonna get a uh, high accuracy if you have huge data set, right? So that's not a uh, uh, major issue, but yeah, uh, five to six epochs could also take in one and a half an hour. So once these results are out, we can just uh, evaluate uh, this particular train model on the new data set, which the model has not seen till yet. So for this, I'm going to uh, take up uh, the Wikipedia and I'm just going to copy this. Uh, particular uh, context present here in this Wikipedia and once this context is present I'm going to ask certain question with respect to this context so this context has not been seen by the model so I'm just going to pass it here in this context variable this all uh, context is being copied here so I will just run this context and uh, with this new reader that, that we are, where we have saved the model we are going to use the method called print on text so this will take up two arguments which is the context uh, and from which the questions you want to ask so uh, it will take up the first it will take up the question and then the context in an inner list so context we have now we have to keep asking the questions so uh, we can ask uh, uh, what uh, uh, what is the uh, capital what is the capital of karnataka and this question has not been seen by the model it has not been trained on the model and this context is very new to the model because we just copied it from the web and we just want to try it the, our model train or model but it, it, it is working on the new kind of questions and context or not so for this we are using this new reader our train model and then we're going to use this uh, method and we're going to pass the question the query that we want to uh, answer and the context uh, so context we have taken it and we pass in a list so we just have to run this and just see the output what it is going to print so you can see it's saying uh, the answer is bangalore uh, which is a capital city of karnataka that's how uh, it is going to so and you can see the score is 55 percent and now uh, we can get to see uh, another type of question let's just try another question uh, so let us ask uh, uh, which is the largest uh, city or we can say uh, what is the language being spoken right uh, okay we can ask uh, what is the language what is the language spoken spoken in Karnataka let's, uh, let's go for Karnataka one. so let's uh, run this Although the context is not with respect to Karnataka, you can see the answer is Kannada and its uh, confidence score is very low. Uh, but uh, once we train this particular uh, uh, model of our few more epochs, the score will get up to high. But the answer is very correct. Uh, with just one epoch, it has understood uh, uh, how to get it now. 
So you can see we haven't trained this kind of model on this particular data set, but it still is, it is able to answer such kind of questions, which has not been, which the model has not seen, right? Now, this all things can perform in a pipeline, right? So this haystack provides all these things to be done in a single pipeline. So uh, we have uh, we have the pipeline as well uh, in in haystack. So uh, from haystack, you have to import pipeline, also document, and some utils from uh, uh, haystack, which is print answer. And then we have to initiate this pipeline, and we have to add a component. Uh, the component accepts uh, the new reader that is uh, our model where we have saved the loaded model and then you can give the uh, name to this particular uh, 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 node uh, that is being added to this pipeline and the input is accept as query right so we are going to input a question so that input has to be given in the form list that is it should be query so this is the input and then this is the pipeline that we have added to this particular pipeline and then once this is been initialized we have to just run p dot run that is pipeline dot run and we have to pass in the query what the query means what is the question so we have to pass the question and the document so document is nothing but the, what is the context so context we have already we already have it and we have to just pass here inside this context and you have to pass the question and it will run uh, run uh, the query over it so we have to pass uh, the query here we have already given the context so context is already present and it will automatically take it here so just you have to pass the context so we can pass uh, let's say what is uh, the largest city in Karnataka Karnataka and we can just pass this context it will automatically take and we can just run this and this print answer will take up and take up this particular results and it will display the uh, score and the answer so let's run this cell and we can see how this pipeline also works so you can see in one shot we are getting the answer you can see the answer is bangalore which is the largest city in karnataka and it is answering this this particular thing from the context given right so you can also see it is also saying from where this answer is being picked up in the particular context you can see uh, it is picking up the uh, answer from this particular context and from the main context it's also showing that particular region and you can see the score is this so uh, this is the pipeline book so this is all what you can do once the model is trained and you can put up in the pipeline and you can get the answer in the form of query and you can print up the answer you can run it and you can get the answer so this is how you can train this is how that easy to train it using this haystack uh, framework uh, so uh, i hope you enjoyed this particular video if you like the content please subscribe channel thank you